chair. But he does. He is moving this team in the right direction in a lot of ways, though. I mean, get the if they get the practice facility, that's something they've needed for a long time. That there's a lot of things moving in the right direction. So kudos to him for that. But uh, you know me, I'm going to stick to the old school stuff. Well, and you know if if and let's hope they are. If he's successful, you'll know that more. <laughs> More and more teams will go with everyone but Belichick will go with more and more coaches. You've already seen it. I mean, I know yeah, there's coaches other everywhere. places, Pete, maybe not to the extent here, but literally, not like they hire because I know the guy they hired. I'm not going to mention the place, but they said they hired. The, Why not? I, name names. No. Come on. It, it was, he was the nickel coach. Like, wait, like, like just nickel? Yeah. Coach is nickel. I'm like, okay. I mean, I guess, you know. Well, that is a starting position. Yeah, now. come on, Tony. No, but I'm, it's it's a part of the say. Once upon a time, Pete, there was yeah, a, secondary a secondary coach. Yeah. That coached safeties and corners and nickel and everything else. And an assistant secondary coach. and a, Yeah, now they got a safeties coach. And yeah, a, I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's And you have inside linebacker coach, outside linebacker coach, assistant inside linebacker but coach. But let's be real. If he wins, it isn't going to be because of the 42,000 coaches he has or the horn no. blowing or the new this. It's going to be because of his quarterback. Well, That's yeah, but Pete, before we get to the we'll, – we'll spend plenty of time on Trevor. But my point is – this is a copycat league, and if it's successful, you'll see more and more teams do it. Again, everyone but Belichick. Belichick is the one guy who's still coaching like when I coached. You have one coach here, one coach there. Your coordinator, if you even name a coordinator, coordinator's co- coach in a position possibly, and this is, this is different. This is, this is where the NFL is going. Let's get a lot to of body, a lot of bodies out there in the middle of that stretching line. <laughs> that That's right. Holy cow. Dude, it's chaotic. I, it's... I, I get nervous watching the stretching line because there's people running around throwing footballs, high fiving each other. I mean, it is a lot going on. <laughs> it's like an assembly line. Up yeah. and back and up and back. You have to have, I mean, there hey, has to be hey, some coordination great, great to that. Great to see you. Great to see you. Have a good practice. Up and back and up and back. By the time you're done stretching, 52 guys have talked to you. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Let's uh, review the weekend. Urban Meyer's first NFL training camp. They had a scrimmage Saturday in the final open practice on the Dreamfinders Homes practice complex and then moved into the stadium Sunday, took the pads off, and did a mock game working on scenarios and situations in front of over 15,000 inside the stadium Sunday morning. Trevor Lawrence, we heard from the Jaguars quarterback after that practice. He enjoyed being in the bank. Having the fans out here is always awesome. Um, just really excited for this season, and you can tell there's just a lot of energy around here. So we're we're pumped. We've had a great camp, and it was fun to have a little scrimmage day in front of some of the fans. Good to hear from Trevor, and uh, I'm not sure if we're going to hear from him before preseason week one. We'll get to the playing and the the all that coming up. But they were in the stadium, Tony, on Sunday morning. Yeah, and you know a little bit of backlash, probably the maybe the. Maybe the first like negative fan reaction to um, the Urban uh, Meyer era, you know, because it was positioned and communicated forever that Saturday or Sunday was going to be a scrimmage for all the fans to come see. And when you think of scrimmage, you think of pads and hitting and getting after it and kind of your first and that because historically that's what's happened. Yeah, there's been one, you know. Whether it's a Saturday night scrimmage or a Sunday afternoon, or whatever, it doesn't matter. It's like a big dress rehearsal, big, and you're yeah, right in, there in yeah. a big moment, and fans yeah. come out. And last minute, at least the way it's described to me, is last minute. You know, Urban decided to take the pads off and make it more of a, you know, it wasn't full speed, but like go through and get some game situations. It was a good crisp practice, nothing wrong with it, but much different um, than the fans were expecting. In any time. Listen, this is the entertainment business. Anytime you're in the business like this and you set expectations and don't meet it, you're going to hear about it. And, boy, it was on talk radio day. My, I was, my text was blowing up from people. <laughs> and my point was I get it. I get the fans being disappointed because, you again, the question is why couldn't you do what you did on Saturday on Sunday because that was a scrimmage. That's what we want to see. And, you know, you, there's, you, and the frustration is fine. But at the end of the day – Urban Meyer's job is to make sure his team is ready for Saturday, this first preseason game. And even more importantly, is ready for the opener when they fly to Houston That's right. and be ready for that game. And so from what I understand and what I heard is like, listen, you had a couple people nicked up a little bit on Saturday. Urban 
with his coaching staff and probably the medical staff and the strength staff all got together and said, hey, let's look at this and let's evaluate what, what is best for our team. Maybe hindsight we could have done different, but we're here now. This is where we are. So let's make the right decision for the team. And that decision was made. And he knows his team better than anybody. You hire him as your head coach. You hire him as the czar, the leader of this football organization. You have to trust him. And he made he made the decision what was best is to take the pads off, give him, give him guys a little bit of a break after a really physical day the day before, and, uh, and especially going into the first preseason week. So I get it. I'm actually, I actually get both sides. And at the end of the day, JPP, does anyone care a week from now if they come out and everyone sees Trevor Lawrence and they have a couple good series or they get out there and hit. And does anyone care if they go, go into Houston after they go into Houston and get, you know, an opening season win? No one's going to care. No. Nope. Um, well, so, I cared. I cared. You know why, why I cared? Because I, I nestled in to watch it yesterday on online and they cut it off. There was nothing. <laughs> Zero. I wanted to watch. But Pete, Give me something. I, I get that. I wanted to see it. But at, at the end of the day, what's Urban's, Urban's job is to what? Get his team ready. I get it, Tony, and I have no problem. If he thought they were too physical on Saturday and felt that he needed to pull back on Sunday, I have I respect that. I respect that decision. But why didn't you flop the days? Now, this is a question that we don't know. If you're going to be physical, why didn't you be physical on Sunday? Is it too close to the game on Saturday this week? No. You know what I mean? But no. what? Okay. No. Then, why would... then the answer to that question is he should have flopped the days and taken care of the fans. You know what it says, though? It shows who's in charge across the board. Because if you're a marketing guy on that team, you're not happy with what happened yesterday. You can't be. I had people griping at me on Twitter. They were mumbling and groaning. And, and, and people out of town, they said they were going to, not in town, but they were like in St. Augustine or whatever. They said they were going to come and then decided, no, I'll watch it on online. And then you watch, you know, Brian Sexton and, and Bucky Brooks talk for an hour. And then it went away. I wanted to watch football. Listen, it was it was we were on the we were on the air for two hours. That's you know, right, you guys had radio. Start try talking to a walkthrough, Pete, for two hours. <laughs> it was, I mean, it was just. <laughs> and here's here's my one big problem with it. This is a team trying to grab the fan base again. Pull them in, grab them, pull them in. And I know winning ultimately does that, but I hear the ticket sales are good, really good, but they're not where they they should be, based on everything that's happened in the off season. So why not use it as an opportunity? Not only that, here's the other part of that. The scrimmage was free, correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay, people who can't afford to go to games during the season, that's how you bring new fans in. You, you know, it, it's just like, and I'm going to give an example from just traveling around the league. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are only allowing season ticket holders to come to their training camp practices. That's bad. That's really bad. It, you know, five, three years ago, they were begging people to come to their practices and come to their games. Now, all of a sudden, you're cutting off people who can't afford to go to games. There's a lot of people who can't afford NFL tickets. They just can't. And the, the kids want to go see this stuff. So there's where my pushback is on it yesterday. I, I just think that, you know, you, you grow your product, you tell them it's this, and then it's not that, or you put it online. And, you know, what are you scared of showing? Plays? Yeah, I, I think I that's wanna, the thing. Yeah, they don't want, uh, you know, it, it's a new staff with new offensive <laughs> but, and defensive okay, coaches. I'm just telling you the mindset. You ask the mindset, the I'm giving but, you the mindset but, but, of that but, 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 side JP, of that, this is where that's ridiculous. I'm just my, telling you. Okay, I'm just going to tell you why I think okay. that's ridiculous. Because Joe Cullen is the defense coordinator, right? Yes. Oh, anyone who watches Baltimore's film over the last several years has a pretty good idea what Joe Cullen is going to do. Might not exactly, but guess what? By week one, the Texans will have a really good idea because of three preseason games. And guess what? After week one, every other team yeah. for the rest of the year will know what they're doing. Daryl Bevel, was he an offensive coordinator uh, last year? For a long time. In the for league. a long yeah, time? That's right. My guess is they're going to have an idea what Daryl Bevel likes to do. It might not be exact, but Shot they're going to know. Yeah. Schottenheimer, too, but yeah. Well, yeah, okay, yeah. Sean and I were two. Both of them. They know we're all that. together. Yeah. All together. Mm -hmm. And so you have an idea of what they're going to do. I don't buy. I have never bought. Now, you get into the playoffs and you want to close your practices and everything else. I get that. I have well, never yeah, bought. Well, yeah, regular season practices are fine being closed. I, I, don't I have agree a with that, Pete. With that. I've, never, I've never bought in at this time of the year of closing things off because you're afraid 
of what someone's going to learn. Like what? Well, here's the other thing too, Tony. If I'm the if I'm David Cully and coach of the Texans, and I got a cousin that lives in South Carolina, I'm going to have him drive on down to Jacksonville and sit in the stands and watch the practice and tell me what they're doing. Nobody's going to know who he is. Well, and, and Pete, and if you want, really wanted to do that. Well, and the other part I do agree with you, and I hate agreeing with you, as you know, <laughs> is. And take the Jaguars out of this because they have opened the practices and yesterday was free for everybody and maybe they didn't get what they expected, but anyone could come. Mm -hmm. I do have a problem with organizations like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I get that you want to make certain th practices just for season ticket holders. We so, did that here. And we did that. I'm yeah. good with that because yeah. you're season you should get some privileges. But at some point, there should be a number of practices open for the general public so that yes. the kids who can't afford to go, who love this yes. team and love football. Because I remember as a kid, one of my favorite things was to do every year to drive from Boulder, Colorado, down to Greeley, Colorado, to watch the Denver Broncos. And not that I knew anything that was going on, but I wanted to see, see my team yeah. and walk up next to them yep. and be around them. And guess what? I fell in love with the game of football. I think that is critical. That's how you build fans. It's, yes. good, it's good for the NFL. Forget about any one organization. It is good for the NFL, especially in a time when there's so much negative about concussions and blah, 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 and this and that and everything else, you want to expose people to and get them excited. This is a great game. And so – Especially and in Jacksonville. The Jaguars, it's even that's, more so in Jacksonville. Right now it's more important. Well, I, I, I mean, people, I, I think that's anywhere. I don't care yeah. where you are. Yeah. All right, guys, let's take our first time out. We've got plenty ahead, including our thoughts about – or their thoughts about Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, I got uh, plenty. C.J. Henderson – has been in the news the last couple yeah. days. We'll touch we'll on that. that. Coming up, let's see. We got a new defensive scheme. What's that going to look like? Much we'll, different. Let me tell you that. Much different. Well, maybe you can watch Joe, the the Ravens tape from the last you know well, five I've watched, years. I've so, watched a lot of Ravens. Trust uh, me. We'll hear Urban Meyer and his thoughts on the passing of Bobby Bowden, and then in the second hour, your social questions. Plenty more ahead. Season tickets, single game tickets, and group tickets. Be a part of the new era of Jaguars football and own it. Visit jaguars.com slash tickets or call 904-633-2000. Jaguars game day broadcasts are presented by Vistar Credit Union, and we are off and running. It's Jaguars Happy Hour, presented by Jet Home Loans on the Jaguars Digital Network. Jaguars Happy Hour is presented in part by TIAA Bank. Created to serve, built to perform. Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. And Baptist Health, changing health care for good. Your family isn't like anyone else's. Your home shouldn't be either. At DreamFinders Homes, you can build the home of your dreams in one of their 30-plus communities in Northeast Florida. Choose from luxury single-family homes or maintenance-free townhomes from the 200s. DreamFinders specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. To find out more, Call 904-738-0165 or visit DreamFindersHomes.com. So, it's happy hour. Let's talk whiskey options. Have you tried Citrus Distillers? Have you tried Citrus Distillers Limited Edition 2021 Barrel Aged Jaguar Whiskey? Did you know it's only available for a limited time and manufactured in Jacksonville? Yes, Jacksonville. I said local whiskey. Try it on the rocks or in a Jack's Whiskey Sour. Citrus Distillers Jaguars Whiskey is available at home. Drink local, Jacksonville. Find recipes and events at jaguarswhiskey.com. Hi, folks. Frank Franzi here to tell you where to find the most authentic Southern pit barbecue in all of Jacksonville. That's right, Bono's. For 72 years, Bono's has been smoking real pit barbecue right here on the First Coast. Smoked for hours, served in minutes, and always cut to order. You can find Bono's locations all around town and on game day at TIAA Bank Field. Bono's is the official barbecue of the Jacksonville Jaguars. If you want great barbecue, head to Bono's today. If you don't see a pit, it ain't legit. At most sandwich places, asking for more of something is just part of the drill. But what if you never had to ask for more? What if more was just a given? At Daly's, more is what our sandwiches are built on. More meat, more cheese, more veggies, more quality, more taste. All for a price that's anything but more. Sandwiches from Dash. Made fresh. Dailies. 
Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go. Exclusively from TIAA Bank, the Jacksonville Jaguars Visa Debit Card comes with a fierce look and fantastic features, along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide. And it's yours, free, when you open a Yield Pledge checking account. Order yours today. Visit TIAABank.com slash JagsCard. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yingli Traditional Lager. The beer for drinkers who know how to tap into their inner eagle and spread their wings. So prepare yourself for takeoff and let your night take flight. Liftoff. When your lips meet that cold, crisp amber lager, there's no looking back. So fly over the radar. Tonight's about the lager, and this lager is all about soaring higher. Yingli Traditional Lager. Spread your wings. DJ Yingling and Son, Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Please drink responsibly. MC and Fat Tony, Jaguars today, all Jaguars, all NFL, all the time. 10 to noon weekdays on 1010XL. Welcome back. It's Jaguars Happy Hour presented by Jet Home Loans. The first time on a Monday since January 4th. This show on that day featured nuggets of the GM and head coach openings at the time. Shad Khan talked about the Urban Meyer rumors and we were discussing... Lawrence versus Fields in the Sugar Bowl. Fast forward to August, and here we are on a Jaguars Happy Hour on a Monday. Urban Meyer is the head coach. Trevor Lawrence is the quarterback. J.P. Shadrick, Tony Baselli, Pete Prisco. Glad you're along with us. Your social questions in the second hour tonight and a plenty ahead in the program here. Trevor Lawrence is now at quarterback for the Jaguars. Now, he hasn't been handed the job, Pete. <laughs> He's still got to earn it, okay? Like, th- let training camp go by. Don't anoint him yet, Pete. He's got to fight off Gardner and, and Bethard and Luton. Why the hell isn't he getting more reps with the ones? I can't figure that one out. That makes no sense to me. Zero. None. I mean, there's no – let's cut the charade. Gardner Minshew isn't beating out anybody. I mean, wh- why would you even play, play that game? It makes no sense. Give them all the reps you can with the ones. Get them used to playing with those guys. If I'm not mistaken, he ran with the second teams to start the scrimmage yet. Or whatever Just one they series. Yeah, they went correct? back and forth, though. Like, they've been doing a lot, of, a lot of camp. They've been kind but of why? both getting reps. Why, why bother? It's an open What's competition. It's an yeah. open competition, Every Pete. Every position is a competition. <laughs> That's like saying – uh, a seven-year-old in art class is competing with Picasso. <laughs> Are you kidding me? What if the kid's a genius? Yeah, you but, never know unless you give him a shot. But, JP, to say every camp is open competition, they're not rolling. First of all, I, I haven't seen. Maybe I've missed. It. I haven't been to every practice, but I've watched. I haven't seen Walker Little sharing reps at the ones with Cam Robinson. Correct. I haven't, you know, seen. Um, I've seen it at right tackle with the starters. I think – well, maybe not. No, he's been getting reps at right. You're he's right. He's getting reps That's at right. right. I haven't – you know, I haven't seen Sha- – you know, I get – you know, Shatley running with the ones. Mm, well, it's uh, like with- saying J.P.'s Al Michaels. Well, you know what I mean? <laughs> well that hurts. Yeah. That's a low blow. <laughs> I'm kidding, wow. Jay. That's a low blow. No, no competition. You see what I'm saying? I mean, I, I'm, not seeing, I'm not much. seeing Shaquille Griffin share time at corner. I mean, right. he's the corner. Now, he's I'll- the starting corner, Right. Now that I think about it, Little has had some first team right no. tackle stuff. Very, no. very few though. I haven't no? seen it. Okay. okay. I, I, anyway, you, you've been at more. Anyway. My point is, I mean, is there any scenario in this world if both <laughs> guys are healthy? Like any scenario you can think of that Trevor Lawrence is not walking out there with the first offense when we play the Houston Texans? Is there like a like I I I would think about it the other day because I actually agree with Pete. If it was me, and again. Urban's won national titles. I have not. So maybe there's a – Did you go to the Sun Bowl one year? Yeah, that was yeah. not a national title okay. game. And maybe there's a method that he that, that he is believes in and has had success in this type of situation. I just can't think of any scenario in the – for the life of me where Trevor Lawrence is not your starting quarterback. And if that's the case, the dude needs reps, as many reps as he can get with the guys that are going to be on the field with him. And it's the right. same this thing. Isn't, this, but, Tony, this isn't Andy Dalton and Justin Fields. You have a veteran who's capable, and you have a kid who's trying to take the job. This is the number one overall pick 
and a guy who proved last year he can't play. Who got bent? Shouldn't even be at the bait. Yeah. I, you're, Pete, I'm not. I mean, the only why thing I will. I, me, why don't they agree with us? I will say this. My, uh, <laughs> I don't know. My I'm rookie, sure they agree, but they. I mean, they're just having publicly said it. No, but they don't. Agree, no, but they don't but the here's what the, the ones. Well, what Pete's saying is different, though. JP, I'm sure. Truth ser- serum to yeah. Urban and so the Trent reason and Urban else. took the job. One of the major reasons right. was the number that's one overall the pick. The point is, if that's the case, then why aren't you getting him as many rips Absolutely. with the ones as possible? Great question. That's that's my only contention. Yeah. I I know it they, doesn't matter. The yeah. rest of it is just like dumb talk radio stuff. That who cares? The 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 real question is is if that's the case and he is your starter, then give him as many reps as possible with the starters. That's my only point. Correct. It, it makes me like those are your Pete, guys. Pete, those are going to be your guys during the season. They're not going to be Gardner Minshew's guys. They're his guys. Now you can give Minshew a few reps with the ones just in case something happens to Lawrence and he's familiar with them. But you, you, you don't give them a split. You don't split them in and out. That's just stupidity. I don't. I don't get it. I, I just don't understand. And maybe Urban knows something that I don't know, which is more football than I do in my life. Will ever know in my lifetime. But this is a bad decision. And, you know, there's over a month to the regular season, though. Every rep counts. And I promise Correct. you, if you ask, if you ask you know Urban or any of those coaches, do you believe reps matter? Do you, be, do you think reps in August matter for September? And I guarantee you the answer is yes. And so I just don't understand it. I mean, but it, it does make me laugh, Pete, because I remember uh, when I got drafted by the Jags, and I don't know if you remember this, during OTAs, I ran with the threes <laughs> because <laughs> Coughlin, quote unquote, this is no lie, wanted to make sure I earned. See, this is what we're saying job. now. This is what they're. This is what they're saying. You got to earn it. That was now, in OTAs when you went to training camp. Where were you? I was with the starters. You got to own it. You got to earn it. And, and here's the thing: Tony knows this as an offensive lineman. You got to work together as a yeah, unit to gel. You got to yeah. get the reps. And as a quarterback, you need to get the reps with those guys in front of you, not just the receivers. I don't – I just – the charade's over. End it. Get it over with, okay? Well, and it goes to the point I mean, because here, I mean, again, no, nothing against Gardner Minshew. He's, at, he's worked extremely hard this offseason. He's had a good camp. And he is clearly the best backup, it's not, in my opinion, watching. Um, and so congratulations, kudos to him for, you know, putting the time in. But anyone who watches the two of them on the field, it's not – I mean, Trevor Lawrence is just – is a different dude. The guy has superior talent that no matter how hard Gardner Minshew ever works, I mean, there's certain things that Trevor Lawrence can just do with the football that Gardner Minshew can't do. He'll pull him out about three or four times, five, five times a practice. Trevor will make a throw. You're like, okay, that's yeah, the just, number one overall pick different. throw. And he so one of these, it's special. You yeah, can't and he, teach and, it. And Pete, you, can't you do watch all the work it. you want. You can't teach it. And you watch the little things: his footwork, his timing, his accuracy. I mean, he is his athletic ability. The other thing that I've been impressed with: how many times during training camp have you seen something where um, there's a, a mechanical issue in the huddle, at the line of scrimmage, him looking confused, him not being in charge? It doesn't happen. Now. The next, the next test is when the live rush comes. That's right. Against the Browns, how does he do in the pocket? Everything looks so far that he can't get hit. He is very comfortable. He moves around in college. He was very comfortable. Mm-hmm. I mean, the guy is looks special. Now he's got to go do it, and there will be a learning curve. And yes, he'll have bad games. And yes, he will throw it to the wrong color jersey because that's what young quarterbacks do. But boy, everything I've seen Pete early, he's special. Oh man, he's special. He's spe- he, for the next decade. Don't worry about the quarterback position. Just do not worry about it. And by the way, kudos to Gardner Minshew to fight through and become the best uh, backup quarterback on the team. Because I didn't, I didn't think, I didn't know if he'd be on the roster. We talked about that last year. And here's the other thing: if he is the backup quarterback, they wasted a lot of money on C.J. Beathard. Yeah, a lot of guaranteed money in that uh, deal. Let's come back. Plenty ahead. We'll have plenty more on the quarterback position in the second hour of. Jaguars happy hour. You can check out the official Jaguars podcast network. It's a free subscription, Tony, on Apple, iTunes, or Spotify. Which one do you use? Spotify. The program, uh, this one will be archived this afternoon. Jaguars reporters, the Huddle Up pod, uh, the Ozone podcast, all that coming up. Give us the five-star rating. 
Coming up, offensive line competition. Urban Meyer remembers legendary college coach Bobby Bowden. But next, we'll hear from Joe Cullen, defensive coordinator, challenging a young defensive player. It's Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Digital Network. Jaguars Happy Hour is presented in part by DreamFinders Homes, homes that fit your lifestyle. Next Grill, everyone's invited. And Adeco. Visit adecousa.com. Your family isn't like anyone else's. Your home shouldn't be either. At DreamFinders Homes, you can build the home of your dreams in one of their 30 plus communities in Northeast Florida. Choose from luxury single family homes or maintenance free townhomes from the 200s. DreamFinders specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. To find out more, Call 904-738-0165 or visit DreamFindersHomes.com. Health care coverage for less? Yes. Now, because of the new health care stimulus, you can get better benefits, more coverage, and pay less with a Florida Blue plan. Claim your savings today. Visit FloridaBlue.com slash get covered now. Policies have limitations and exclusions. If you already had health insurance in 2021, speak with an agent to find out how changing plans could impact your deductibles and out-of-pocket maximums. Florida Blue and Health Options Incorporated, DBA Florida Blue, HMO, are independent licensees of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association. Everyone's so busy keeping up. Forget about the Joneses. We all on our telephones with the texts and the tweets and the beats. What he said, she said, can't even follow the three. Down the hole, we all go. Me, I like keeping up, too, with my corona and my attitude. That's La Vida Masfina. Relax responsibly. Corona Extra Beer, imported by Crown Imports, Chicago, Illinois. Kessler Creative, proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, has the print services you need for your business. Need log banners and signs for your next promotional event? How about vehicle wraps to advertise your company fleet? Find out for yourself how Kessler Creative can help you stand out from the competition with eye-catching designs that are sure to impress your customers. Kessler Creative, Jacksonville, Florida. Results-driven marketing and a proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Land Rover Defender story began with the simple thought of creating an exceptionally capable off-road vehicle, becoming the go-anywhere, do-anything, all-terrain machine. Today, there's a new Land Rover Defender, the toughest and most advanced Land Rover vehicle ever. From the beginning, Land Rover knew the new Defender was capable of great things. Motor Trend's 2021 SUV of the year is just the latest example. Test drive the new Land Rover Defender today at Land Rover Jacksonville on Atlantic Boulevard or go to LandRoverJacksonville.com. Land Rover, above and beyond. Summer is the perfect time to update your home. It's the best savings of the year going on right now at Renewal by Anderson of Florida. Get 25% off replacement windows and patio doors. Plus, no money down, no payments, and no interest for 12 months. Find out more at rbafla.com. Renewal by Anderson, the official replacement window and door partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Offer expires August 31st. Restrictions apply. Minimum purchase of three windows or patio doors required. License number CGC1527613. When Jaguars news breaks, you'll hear about it first on 1010XL, home of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Well, work in progress. He needs to get better, you know, and expect more from him. Uh, Like I said last week when I was here, I expect greatness from Josh, and uh, we're going to keep pushing Caleb on until we get it out of him. But he's got to get better. He's trying to do everything we're asking. We just got to fine tune some of his technique. Keep it simple for him. Get to a spot fast, because you do have God-given ability. Get to a spot fast, and if you tackle, I'm talking his pass rush. Tackle takes it, takes it away. Get to your counter. That's it. Joe Cullen, defensive coordinator. Love hearing that voice back in the Jaguars coaching staff. And welcome back to Jaguars Happy Hour. J.P. Shadrick, Tony Baselli, Pete Prisco. Glad you're along with us today. He was discussing Caleb on Chazon. That was on Friday after practice. Kind of, you know, hey, challenging him a good bit there with that soundbite. And then Saturday, Tony, Chazon came out, I think had his best practice of camp so far. Sack was all over the ball, pass defensed at the line of scrimmage. I don't know if he heard the soundbite, but it was good to see him really step up and step out. Yeah, I mean, I think the system that Joe's putting in will, will help feature 
Kavalon Jason's ability. Kalevon. Kalevon. What did I say? Kavalon. Oh, Kavalon. It's Kalevon. <laughs> I said. <laughs> there Kay- it is. Kalevon. Kay- 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 the show is officially, <laughs> is officially underway. Masali butchering Kay- Kay- What Kay- are you saying? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you, Schlin. Kavalon. <laughs> um, uh, it's a better. It's a better. Um, system because it, it'll put him in space more i think he got swallowed up last year and, and he didn't do a great job with the transition from college to having his hand in the ground every play as a defensive end for the jaguars and i think in this three four he's in space he can move around a little bit get matched up with back sometimes get matched up with the tight end every once in a while and rush from a space position against the tackle is going to help him out quite a bit because he is an athlete his god-given ability is as joe colin had, had mentioned um what I and I didn't see Saturday's practice. I wasn't here. Um, but what I've seen in practice, what I've seen on tape, um, he is better, but still, he gets overwhelmed a little bit. Um, he does, you know, he's a guy. He has to use that speed and get get the get the tackles hands off him. If he gets engaged, he's just not a big enough man to overcome it. So uh, I, I think what Joe said is exactly right. It's a work in progress and. Uh, He's got to get better. They they need production out of him this year. They need production out of Josh Allen as well. Um, you know, watching him in camp, it, nothing's. It's not like there's been a bunch of big flashes. Mm-mm. I haven't seen at least. No, um, not early. No, nope. I mean, Saturday was really the one for him. No, I'm talking about Josh, Josh Allen. Allen. Yeah, yeah. And did, he looks in great shape. Oh, he looks in great shape. Did yeah. how did I, and I, again? I didn't see Saturday. Did but he no, fla- no, no. Did I'm, he flash I'm on? I'm Saturday? at Chase on Saturday. I'm sorry. Yeah, I apologize. And I don't. I mean, nothing really. Nothing that you say. Nothing Ooh. out of the ordinary, yeah. but he's really good. So that's great. It, how many sacks for Jay Vallon? <laughs> well, this year? Because that's his name from now on, because Tony called him How many sacks for Kay Vallon this year, Tony? How many, Tony? Ten? Um, no. I'd say six or seven. So if they can get double digits out of Allen – which they should. If you're pick where you're picked, you should get that. That guy should get double digits. Five for five or six for Kavalon. Um <laughs> It's Kalevon. Kalevon. Yeah. I know what it is, though. Kalevon. I'm just mocking you. All right, five or six for Kalevon. How many? Where else do they get? Because you got to get the. 40, 35, 40 to have a good pass rush. Oh, are you going to get uh, uh, interior? Roy yeah, Robertson Roy, Harris? Robertson Harris, I think, will give some production to you. I How think, many? Three or four? No, four I, think five? Get, I think he has five or six. I think Smoot's another guy who's going to, I think you'll see, um, you know, six to eight. I think Jahan. Well, now we're 16 plus the four or five is 20, 21, six to eight, 27, 28. Miles Jack will get a couple as blitzer, maybe mm-hmm. five or six, right? Yeah, and don't forget about. Uh, Jod Ward. Jod Ward. He's another guy who's, you know, he's a, you know, middle, you know, middle single digit guy. What I'm trying to that. point out is to get the 35, Chase on has to be better than what you think he's going to get. And Allen has to be better than what I think he's going to get. What did you say you think Allen will get? 10. Yeah. Hey, why did we're looking at Smoot on the cat? Why did he change his number? Wasn't he 94 before? He was. And uh, 91 was open. And when Ngakwe was no longer, that was it. Was that his he high school and college number yeah, or something? There's, there's some meaning behind it. Okay, I was Nothing. curious. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, switching gears. Yeah. By the way, we're sticking on defense here. Yeah. And uh, C.J. Henderson's been in the news this week. Trade rumors are out there. Some reports have been out. Even this afternoon, the times Picayune in New Orleans said that the Saints are looking at uh, corners and including C.J. Henderson. That has been a hot topic today, Tony. Well, yeah, I mean, and if you look at from the beginning – you know, if C.J. Henderson being the first-round pick last year, he, you know, came out. There were some comments during camp and, you know, uh, I mean, pre-camp, I mean, I'm sorry, draft day, if I go back to, was like about his interest to in being a Jaguar. That quickly went away, quickly put that to bed, no big deal. Came out in camp, you know, maybe some nicks and, you know, injuries during camp. But then opening day last year was like a superstar. It was a great game. Great game. Had an interception off Rivers. Yeah, I mean, thing. just looked fabulous. And and then was up and down was like a lot of rookies, but then the injuries started coming. And then you just started hearing stuff just like – and it was just – and the next thing you know, he's an IR. Um, so he had a shoulder issue, then a groin yeah, injury. Like, pretty it was a bunch IR. of different stuff. Right. And so you, you started instantly worrying about the availability. Um, and then this offseason, 
you know, you didn't hear a lot about it, but you heard, you know, is there injuries? And then he starts off camp, you know, on the COVID list. And then he sh- finally shows up. And then he's one practice and then he's gone again. And so there's just all these different things swirling. And immediately you hear about these trade rumors. Yeah. And so, you know, not where you want to be with the guy you picked in the top 10 to come solve your corner issue. And, um, but this is where we are, and this is – we'll see where it goes. I mean, the rumors are out there. Pete, you hear about them. Um, you know and I can tell you what. I was just in New Orleans. They're looking for a corner. And you know there's, you know there's people, regardless of what has happened here and all the different rumors and nonsense and whatever, whatever is true or not, who knows, um, you just know that the rumors are about trade. You know he's been at one practice, and it's been a little bit – you know he's not been available. That's right. But you, but there's a he was a he was a top corner prospect just a year ago, and you know that a bunch of other teams had him high on their board. So um, now will they get the value that a top as a top corner? No, but they'll get something. There'll be a team out there interested because they will feel like and they will remember the evaluation they did of him as a Gator and say, hey, whatever happened at Jacksonville happened. We can fix it. We can get the most out of him. Let's go take a chance. And, and he's got a relatively cheap contract. That's right. It's a I rookie mean, so deal. If you're like you're the saint, you've got a bunch of money in Marshawn Lattimore, who might get suspended, by the way. And your other corner, you wait, drafted wait, wait, the kid whoa, from Stanford. Get suspended for what? For what? For, he got arrested for um, – he had a gun charge, a legal firearm or whatever. So oh, there's good. a chance he gets suspended. Hmm. And then you have – the kid you drafted out of Stanford, a Devo, and you have Patrick Robinson and guys like that. I mean, these guys are 120 years old. They, they need a corner. And, and I was told they're going to get a corner. Henderson would make a lot of sense to the Saints. It's a cheap corner. But again, when you start talking about players, it, why isn't he on the – availability is the only ability that truly matters, and he hasn't been available. And that's the big concern. It's an availability issue. Um, and. You can't, you, you can't control COVID. I mean, he's on the COVID. No, that's – that's no, you can't – COVID is any – Yeah, you can't – I mean, that's, not, that's, how the, right. that's how the young man's right. – uh, The question you know, is, does he love it? Well, I mean, that's the question. I mean, and that's always a question. It was a question when he came out of college in Florida. The scouts all – when you talk to the scouts and personnel people, they ask that same question. Does he love it? Will he, will, will he get to the NFL game and love it? And that's well, the question. It's, it's something that you have to – I mean, it's one of the evaluation. It's part of the evaluation process. Anytime you pick a guy, you know, there's a lot of talented guys. I mean, and set aside C.J. Henderson for a second. There's a ton of talented guys in college that are just great because they're great athletes, but they don't truly love ball. And it, you better love football if you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna have long-term success. And 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 you want a guy. You want a locker room full of guys who love ball. That just love football. It's a hard game, and if you don't love it, it's really, really hard. Um, what, what do you think they get back for? Like, say the Saints make it, call them up, and say, "Hey, we'd love to have him as our starting corner." What do you get back for him? I heard they have a disgruntled wide receiver, right? Well, yeah, they're not well, trained, uh, hearing stories about <laughs> him over it. there. You don't just want him it. here either. Yeah, no. yeah, you're not getting Michael Thomas. I don't think. Well, you don't just want him here it. anyways. Yeah, Tell I mean, because there's a lot of noise around him. Pete, to your point. Oh, my gosh. You don't want them around there. That's not what this young team needs. That's not what that young quarterback needs. They don't – no, you don't want – you don't want that. And so um, – So what do you get back? Third or fourth? Boy, I'll tell you what. I, I'd, I'd be apprehensive to trade him for a three or four. Unless it totally was gone with him when it's not fixable, which I don't think that's the case. I wouldn't trade him for anything less than a two. But you think, I mean, Pete, but you, I mean, you know this as well as I do. If there, it just depends how much smoke is out there, you know, and we don't hear everything. I mean, and half the stuff we hear is rumors. Then hold so, on to them. Well, then, yeah, then I, I would agree with you, but you have, to, I think if you're building something here, you have to make the decision. And again, I'll go back to, you want a bunch of guys in that locker room that love football. And I don't know yes. CJ Henderson, so I'm not going to make an evaluation. I don't know. You heard, to Pete's point, you heard stuff coming out of college last year. It's a long time ago. But Urban and the coaching staff, they've been around him now. And Trent Baalke, part of the evaluation is 
okay, number one, what do you want to get for him? And if it's a two and you, you can't get a two, well, then if you keep him, is – is he going to be available? Are we going to get production out of him? And does he want? Does he love it? I don't know that. I can't answer those questions. Only- See, and I don't think this is. I don't think this is a case where Jalen didn't want to be in Jacksonville. I don't think that's the case at all. That that's not the issue. It's not this staff or this regime or anything like that. That's what, at least that's what I. So I, it's just a matter of get him on the field. And if I'm Urban Meyer and Gang, I'd like to have him on my team. But if so, but if, if they clearly, it's been leaked out there that he's available, and teams know that. How do you mend that fence now? If you do, you know, if that gets out, that's out. Well, that's Pete, there's overcome. And just by just, you know, um, it's pretty obvious that if you're top ten pick after just one year and a partial year because he was injured is all of a sudden available after one practicing for one day with you raises questions. We've got plenty of show ahead. Another hour coming up at 5 o'clock of Jaguars happy hour. By the way, Michael Thomas, remember, went to Ohio State. Played for You'd a, have to give it. You, the, just the saying. Saints would have to eat $22 million. I know. I know. Year. I know. I get that. I'm just, just saying. Just don't bring up silly things like that. Let's come back in a moment. We'll hear from <laughs> really? Urban yeah, Meyer. On, <laughs> we'll hear from Urban about the passing of the legendary college coach at Florida State, Bobby Bowden. It's Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Digital Network. Your family isn't like anyone else's. Your home shouldn't be either. At DreamFinders Homes, you can build the home of your dreams in one of their 30-plus communities in Northeast Florida. Choose from luxury single-family homes or maintenance-free townhomes from the 200s. DreamFinders specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. To find out more, call 904-738-0165 or visit DreamFindersHomes.com. Committed to the team. Committed to the mission. At Navy Mutual, we're committed to providing high-quality life insurance to members of the military and their families. So our policies have no fine print and no military service restrictions. We don't work on commission. We're nonprofit, so we pass the savings along to our members. Because at Navy Mutual, our highest commitment is to you. Visit NavyMutual.org. Navy Mutual, ensuring those who serve. Hold on. You want me to tell them about Twisted Tea Hard Iced Tea in just 30 seconds? This is impossible. Hey, I'm Billy from Twisted Tea. How can I explain that first sip of cold, smooth, real brewed tea? So good! And the extra kick you get from just the right amount of alcohol? (laughs) The twist of lemon, the... Wait, what? We're almost out of time? Oh, sh**. Twisted Tea Hard Iced Tea. Look for the bright yellow cans wherever you buy beer. Twisted Tea Brewing Company, Cincinnati, Ohio. Please drink responsibly. At ViStar, we believe in better, better convenience, so members can bank any way they want, whether it's at a branch, on a mobile device, or at one of more than 20,000 surcharge-free ATMs across North America, because we believe that people have better things to do with their time. If you believe that convenience is better, join ViStar. Visit ViStarCU.org. All loans subject to approval, insured by NCUA. Jaguars fans are gearing up and saving big at Fanatics.com, the world's largest collection of officially licensed fan gear from all the leagues, teams, and Jaguars players you love. Shop the most trusted brands, exclusive designs by Fanatics, and autograph collectibles from today's biggest stars. Join Fanatics Rewards today and earn fan cash on every purchase. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we built the SUVs of the future for everyone, like Ford Escape, Edge, or Explorer. All named 2021 IIHS top safety picks with specific headlights. One of the many reasons why Ford has the freshest lineup of SUVs in America. Because the SUVs of the future aren't built for a few. They're built for America. Ford SUVs. Drive one today. When equipped with available LED headlamps based on auto source incorporated data obtained on 10 Jacksonville Sports Talk for Jacksonville sports fans. 1010XL, home of the Jacksonville Jaguars.
about Bobby Bowden, and uh, uh, he couldn't be more genuine of a person. Him and Ann, we spent, obviously we, we coached against each other, but that was compared to the time we spent together on those Nike trips, and a dear friend and one of the greatest people I've ever met in my life. So our prayers to that. What a life he lived, though. 91 years of uh, great life. All young coaches grew up watching uh, Coach Bowden at Tallahassee and Coach Spurrier at, at the Swamp, and that changed college football. Yes, it did. That's Urban Meyer, Jaguars head coach, former Florida head coach, discussing the passing of legendary Florida State head coach Bobby Bowden. Welcome back. It's Jaguars Happy Hour. J.P. Shadrick, Tony Baselli, Pete Prisco. Another hour starting in just a few minutes at the top of the hour. We'll get back to the uh, Trevor Lawrence talk and the biggest news of the week. C.J. Henderson has been in the news. We'll get your social questions coming up in the second hour. Uh, Pete, what are your memories of Bobby Bowden? Did you ever deal with him much in the old days? Yes, I did. Not, I mean, not a ton, but uh, always gracious, always accommodating. And, and I'm going to tell a story. When, we were, when I was at the Times Union, we investigated their program. We did a thorough investigation of cheating allegations, and I was a part of that. And I, we actually got the story. And I had to do the confrontational interview with Bobby. The story never ran, by the way, for whatever reason. But it was I did the confrontational interview with Bobby. And I figured most coaches would scream and yell at you. Not him. He was he was classy, um, very easy to deal with. And I always respected him because of that. And, and plus, I know a lot of guys who played for him. And, and when they played for him, like Leroy Butler. You know, Leroy Butler and Edgar Bennett, guys I've known for a long time, they just love the guy. So I always had, um, you know, this idea that he was a different kind of coach, maybe more so, a little more folksy, a little more down home, and really had a great relationship with his players. How difficult was that confrontational interview, the idea of having to go confront him? Well, for some, it was it was actually done on the phone, but if, if, but for some coaches, no matter where it's done, it would have been bad. And, yeah. and he he wasn't that way. I mean, you know, we had a story. It was allegations of of the program cheating, and it never ran. Yeah. Um, but it, it was a good story. It was well researched, and for whatever reason, something happened. It didn't run, but um, it could have been ugly, and it wasn't. And and I respected him for that. I mean, and, and the times I went over there. I mean, one time we were driving through. This had nothing to do with him, but we were driving through that parking lot looking, writing down license plate numbers in the player parking lot, and they chased us away. I mean, that's the kind of investigation it was. And, wow. and, and he, you know, could have been angry about it. He was, he was always, he was always easy going as a coach. And, and even with the media, and I think that's why the media liked him so much. About you, Tony? Did you ever interact with uh, Coach much. Bowden? No, not much. Hall of Fame stuff, college Hall of yeah, Fame stuff? Yeah, not a lot. No. 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 And uh, maybe not at all. I'm trying to think. Uh, covering games. I uh, did some college games for Florida State when he was there. I did his last game at the Gator Bowl. Mm -hmm. um, but I have a lot of friends who played for him and new guys who played for him. And, and everything you hear, um, great coach, better person. And if you just look at the life he's lived, I think, uh, Urban said it best. I mean, what a life. What an example um, that he set for so many individuals and what an impact he made at Florida State in you know, building a program, yes, on the field, but also I've never heard one person say anything negative about Bobby Bowden. And no. that's, that's tough. I mean, you know, you, find, you talk to enough people, you can find somebody who doesn't like a person. But I, you'd be hard-pressed to find someone who doesn't like Bobby Bowden. And, and built the program from – from, it was a disaster. Scratch, basically. It was yeah. awful. Yeah. It turned into, and the best way he did it was he went and played other people. Remember, they used to go play and get the sod games. They'd go grass. Right. For, they'd cut after they beat upset teams on the road. They'd cut out the grass and bring it home. They still have I mean, it, by the way. The, the sod farm. Nothing right but there. respect for what he did at Florida State. Plenty ahead on the second hour of Jaguars Happy Hour. Trevor Lawrence, C.J. Henderson. The Jaguars continue with training camp this week. Preseason week one is coming up Saturday. The Jaguars host the Browns. Your social questions coming up will go around the league as well. The Jaguars' new Prowl Pass gives you nine home games for just 225 bucks. Visit jaguars.com slash prowl and get yours now. And what a deal that is. 
One hour down, one hour to go. It's Jaguars Happy Hour presented by Dead Home Loans on the Jaguars Digital Network. Your family isn't like anyone else's. Your home shouldn't be either. At DreamFinders Homes, you can build the home of your dreams in one of their 30-plus communities in Northeast Florida. Choose from luxury single-family homes or maintenance-free townhomes from the 200s. DreamFinders specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. To find out more, call 904-738-0165 or visit DreamFindersHomes.com. Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go. Exclusively from TIAA Bank, the Jacksonville Jaguars Visa Debit Card comes with a fierce look and fantastic features, along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide. And it's yours, free, when you open a Yield Pledge checking account. Order yours today. Visit TIAABank.com slash JagsCard. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. It may be football season, but pests are in full force here in Jacksonville. That's why you need Kingfish Pest Control's $99 knockdown treatment. Kingfish Pest Control will safely eliminate spiders, ants, roaches, and more for just $99, backed by their 100% customer satisfaction guarantee. Kingfish Pest Control is family-owned with thousands of A-plus customer reviews. They're hands down the best pest control company in Metro Jacksonville and a proud partner of your Jacksonville Jaguars. Let the pros tackle the pest in your home. Go to kingfishpest.com. That's kingfishpest.com. When it comes to water, choose our team, the winning team. Choose CGC Water Treatment. CGC Water Treatment works, and it works for DG, too. Former Dags QB, David Garrard. If you're not filtering your water, you are the filter. Don't be the filter. Discover the kinetical difference. Call CGC Water Treatment at 844-CGC-JAGS or visit cgcwater.com. CGC Water Treatment are proud partners of the Jacksonville Jaguars and your local independent Connecticut dealers. Have you painted yourself for game day and dyed your pet's fur to match? Do you bleed your team's colors and deck your pet out in team gear? Do you plan game day watch parties for fellow sports lovers and their beloved pets? Then you are a rare breed. You are a pet fanatic, equal parts pet obsessed and diehard sports fan. At Pet Paradise, they're crazy about pets too. The official pet care provider of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Pet Paradise. It's a new day in pet care. So, it's happy hour. Let's talk whiskey options. Have you tried Citrus Distillers? Have you tried Citrus Distillers Limited Edition 2021 Barrel Aged Jaguar Whiskey? Did you know it's only available for a limited time and manufactured in Jacksonville? Yes, Jacksonville. I said local whiskey. Try it on the rocks or in a Jack's Whiskey Sour. Citrus Distillers Jaguars Whiskey is available at local liquor stores, restaurants, and the Jaguar Stadium. Drink local, Jacksonville. Find recipes and events at jaguarswhiskey.com. Welcome back. It's Jaguars Happy Hour, the second hour of the program. J.P. Shadrick, Pete Frisco, CBS Sports senior writer and pride of the Jaguars left tackle, Tony Baselli. Glad you're along with us as the Jaguars continue training camp 2021. Players off today, back on the practice field Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then they'll host the Cleveland Browns in preseason week one, Saturday night, 7 o'clock at TIAA Bank Field. I can't believe it's here already. This is our first Monday happy hour program since January 4th. We're back, and we'll be here pretty much every Monday until the uh, day after the Super Bowl, Pete, if the uh, Jaguars go that far. How about it? And uh, if Tony goes to England and can't do the show, that'll be our highest-rated show that Monday like it always is it's year a tra- in and year out. It's a tradition unlike any other. What is the latest oh, yeah. Is there any like word on the uh... – Ticket sales are beginning in phases in the U.K.? Okay. And I think they're going to sell until otherwise. You know, if if I don't know if there's a drop dead date where they have to say, hey, it's not going to happen or it is going to happen. But ticket sales are beginning in phases in the UK for those games. So that means that we will have our Tony list show that Monday after the game. The highest rate every Huge. year since we've been doing this show. It's the highest rated show going through the roof. Yeah, we'll see about that. A spike. <laughs> the, the numbers don't lie. Oh, they I mean, do they lie. 
No, they don't. People say they love it, Pete. I mean, I get a lot of people who come to me and say that show is, is magic radio. I well, mean, they, it's well, incredible let's, to listen to. Let's test it. You guys can do the last hour by yourself. I'll go home and eat dinner. Yeah, he, he's always looking for a way out. We're starting with a bang, Pete. You can count me out, Pete. 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> next period. Well, Pete good. and JP. Well, Tony well, leaves. Great. Tony, get ready. Walk <laughs> out. Hydrate. hydrate. Walk hydrate. out. Walk hydrate. out. Hydrate, JP. You're going to have to carry it more. Make sure your water. Get the water. Oh, I love it. I do miss um, – I always enjoyed that London game. I mean, I, I know very few people probably did. I mean, I don't know who did or did not. It was always fun. Did you enjoy going over there? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I had a personally, good time. I mean, Jay, Jeff, I mean, I mean, not, uh, Joe, how do you feel about it? You're I mean, it's a lot of work for you, technical guys. Yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, it is. You know, for guys JP, like Tony, ever- Pete, for guys like Tony, he gets to do all the big fancy parties right. and all he these things. On, he's on a yacht. He goes on Sean's yacht. Yeah, he has a party. Right. Hey. I mean, come on. He's oh, not hey, working. Don't hate, it's hey, a work don't trip hate, for guys like me. Work trip. Hey, don't hate the player. Hate the game. JP, yeah. you go every year, though. No, you don't go. I have been every year. Yes, I've been very fortunate. To so go what? Every you year. have to come home early, and he gets to stay. Which is right. When you come back, you do the show. Yeah. Tony has like other duties, I guess. So I come back, I have, and I'm on the air Monday here in this studio after flying back with the team. I have yes. sponsorship responsibilities. It's that amazing. might not be the well, case again, this year. Might not be the case. I, don't know. I, Too early to tell. Yeah, I mean, I haven't even heard you know what the plan is, but it'd be fun. Well, we're I hoping mean, you have to stay an extra day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> keep, the, keep the tradition going love it the uh, jaguars are in the stadium sunday they're off today as we said back on the practice field the rest of the way no more open practices to fans sunday was the last chance to see the jags for free in this offseason program cj henderson has been in the news today well the trade rumors have been out there at least and this afternoon the uh, new orleans times picayune newspaper uh, reporting that the Saints are looking for a corner, including looking at C.J. Henderson. There are those trade rumors. That's not the only one that's been out there today, Tony, but that's been the big topic of discussion all and, day. And, and Pete, you think, we talked about this in the first hour, you think they can, they should try to get a second rounder. You think they can get a second rounder for uh, C.J.? Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, he is was the ninth overall pick. People had first high first-round grades on him. So, yeah, I think there's a possibility. No, I, I listen from a talent standpoint. There's no doubt about it. We saw it firsthand. The dude can play football when he's on the they're field. They're not getting no. They're not getting a first round pick. No, I know that. They, they, but my point is, he can play. The question is, you know, availability, which we addressed. And if I was a opposing team, my first question is, okay, why are you trading him after one year? Right. I mean, wouldn't you? That's a legitimate question. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, By the way, it's legit- if it's even true, the yeah. Jaguars have not confirmed they're That's trading right. them. That's right. There's nothing out there. It's a report, you know, on several outlets are saying that they're that they are op- it's open for business as far as having conversations about trading for C.J. Henderson. But to be clear, the Jaguars have not confirmed that that is the case. And but as far- again, I go back to the Saints. For the Saints, a cheap corner, and that's what he is right now. Makes a lot of sense for a cornerback needy team. For example, if they were in the market to trade for Xavier Howard before he got his deal restructured, that would have been two $20 million corners. You can't do that. But you can do it with C.J. Henderson because his deal is fi- is financially uh, good for the team. So I-, I think it's possible that the Saints could make that deal if they want to. All right, so the Jaguars spent a lot of – actual cash and then draft equity at the cornerback position this offseason. Shaq Griffin came over in free agency. Big deal, of course, from the Seahawks. And then uh, in the draft, Tyson Campbell, second-round draft pick. If, for some reason, C.J. Henderson is no longer on this roster, are the Jags okay at cornerback? Do they they feel like they have to go get somebody else at some point that can actually go play and play right away? Um. Well, let's go through it. I mean, Sidney Jones, you know, again, nicked up a lot throughout his career. But when he was healthy last year, he looked he played good corner. Outside corner was a good player. <clears throat> Trey Herndon, more of a nickel or a backup outside guy, I think was where. I mean, but he started outside and was a productive guy. But um, he's he a to, nickel. He's a yeah. Nickel. I, that's why I said he moved to nickel. Um, I've been super impressed with what I've seen from Tyson Campbell. He seems to be around the ball, good cover guy, has length. He was good yesterday. Good size. Yes. Um, and so, you know, you drafted him at the top of the second round for a reason. It's almost like having another first rounder. Um, so, I, I mean, I think you could 
You could piece it together. Yeah, I think you could piece it together, but it hurts because you're counting on you, – you got you draft the guy in the top ten because you think he's a starter. Right. Well, how do you play it if Henderson's there? It's Henderson, uh, Griffin, and, and – Campbell's the nickel. Yeah, I think Campbell. Campbell's the Campbell's nickel. Campbell's the nickel. Yeah. So if, he, if he's not there, then it becomes what? Griffin, Jones, and Campbell's the nickel, or Griffin, Campbell outside, and Herndon is the nickel? Yeah, some combination of the such. Where do you think Campbell's more comfortable playing? I think he's an outside corner. Um, yeah, I, that's I don't know, Pete. I have not, to be honest with you, it's not like I've watched every play to see where he's been no. lining up, but, and I've not talked to, I haven't heard from any of the coaches, or I don't think they've addressed. But he looks to me like an outside corner. Well, that's because he, of his know, length. Right, you, right, and the little corner in the slot usually has to turn and yeah, and has, right. I, I don't. He's more of a long glider. I, I don't. I think he could play the nickel, but I think he's more of an outside guy. Yeah. Another uh, position of interest, of course, in this training camp so far has been the offensive tackles. Cam Robinson, he's in the franchise tag year, $13.7 million guaranteed this season. Jawan Taylor on the right side, trying to bounce back from a penalty-laden season, let's say a year ago. And then the Jaguars in the second round, later in the second round after the Campbell pick, Went and got Walker Little from Stanford. He has not played since early in the 2019 season. He injured his knee in the opening game against Northwestern that year and missed the entire season. Came back, opted out last year, did not play last season, so he has not played football since week one of 2019. He told me the other week that uh, he is fired up to be back in an actual football game at some point very soon. There have been some moments, at least in one-on-ones when the pads went on, that you can see his size and his uh, his ability to to play and do things the right way. Tony, what have you seen on tape from him? What have you seen out of, of little the, the times you've seen him in person? Um, he's a big athletic man. I mean, he's just a big person. Um, and he has natural ability, natural strength um, to be a really good player, both, you know, run game, pass game. Obviously, you know, some, you know, some things he can clean up um, in the pass game, in in you know, footwork, you know, in coordination with you know, uh, in uh, working with his hand placement and everything else. But just overall, um, you see why he was, you know, before the injury and before the opt out was, you know, thought about as a first round draft pick and. And my guess is if he would have played last year, he would have been a first-round draft pick this year. I mean, he's he is a very high ceiling. And I think he'll push. Does he both play the, this year? I think, I think he'll push both the tackles. Does he play this year? I think he does. Which side? When? Left. <laughs> I mean, Pete, you do this all the time. <laughs> when? I don't know. Well, I mean, people want to know. That's what, you're the I don't know. Well, you're the here's the thing. I, I've said all year. Said the offseason, saying it in camp. Feel really good about the interior too. I think the the um two out the two tackles, Juwan Taylor and Cam Robinson, have a ton of talent. I think they have upside. They're big physical men. They are inconsistent. And you have to be more consistent. If you want to be effective as an offense, you need consistency out of those guys where they can hold up when it matters. And I just I worry about the footwork. I worry about, you know, uh, especially in the pass game. I worry about um, holding up on good outside rushers where we saw them struggle last year at times. And in early, and this is super early, so you, you don't want to jump to conclusions after a little bit over a week of camp. You still see some of the tendencies. We'll talk about Cam Robinson where he kind of opens up the gate, gets – you know, perpendicular to the line of scrimmage really early, shortening that corner for an outside rusher. And that's something that has plagued him for most of his career. And I think Juwan Taylor is, again, another guy. I think he needs to play bigger. I don't think Juwan Taylor plays as big um, as he – as uh, I think he should. Now, you're, you're you know, it's funny, Tony, when you mentioned that, because I, I think the same thing, when you – Leon Searcy was not a big man, but he played big. He played big. This, he, this guy doesn't play big. I, and, and judging from what people are saying up there, and I only saw one practice, he's had a good camp, Jawan Taylor. But I'm with you. 
JP, you're being kind. Penalties? That wasn't the only part of his problems in his game last year. He wasn't very good. He regressed. He regressed. Cam Robinson didn't get better. That's why they drafted Walker Leonard. And so I think I think early in the season, Walker Little will be the left tackle. Tony early. does too. He just doesn't want to say so it. So you think or the, early? You know, they, they, right. they owe Cam Robinson $13 million no matter what. Now. Which is why he's the starter right now. But you think Walker Little wins the job before too long? I, I, it's a, if he, let's put it this way. If Cam Robinson plays like he did last season, yes, I Walker, agree. Little, Walker Little will be in there by October. I agree with that. Then what do you do with Cam Robinson? After the year, you get rid of him. He's your backup. You just eat the – he's well, the backup and, and he's – Well, yeah, you're not going to play him. First of all, I don't care how much you're, you're paying one, you're the guy. Here. If the guy behind him is better, you're not going to play him. Right. You don't move him to a different spot. Where? He's not going to overtake Where? any – I don't well, know. Yeah, There's he, all that talk of trying to make guard. He hasn't done any guard work that I zero. know of. Okay, is he going to be better okay. than A.J. Can or, uh, or Norrell? Obviously, they don't think so. If he's not working or cross-training there, right? No. So then you got Norwell, back Norwell and AJ Can had good years last year. And then you got Shatley behind them and Barch and those guys. Well, Barch is right. a, I think they, still a project. You got then you got then you have an expensive backup. Well, you, I mean, you deal with it. But I mean, but you didn't when you paid him, you didn't know you were getting a tackle like no, that. No, that's right. That you didn't spot. know Walker Little was going to be there. Um. So if you're in that scenario, when you drafted. If you didn't know Walker Little was going to be there when you signed Cam, when you put that tag on Cam Robinson, your backup was Will Richardson. Correct. That's right. So, so, so you protected yourself, and now you protected yourself, and you still got to tackle. So the best guy plays. If it's Walker Little, I don't care what Cam Robinson's making. He's going to be an expensive backup for a year. Yeah, you it's only a one-year yourself, deal. You paid him, right? You didn't give him a long-term deal. But I, I would agree with Pete. And listen, I'm rooting for. Because I like Cam a lot. But the bottom line is you have to be consistent. You, I mean, you can have all the potential in the world, and you can have all the ability. You can be big, and you have to be athletic. If you don't get it done, don't block people. Yeah, especially with what's standing in the backfield. I don't care who's in the backfield. Days. Your job is to protect the quarterback. Now, it might be in the spotlight more now, but it, do, it doesn't change. Nothing changes. It doesn't matter if they it's re- – the, Those two regressed. I mean, Jerron Taylor really regressed back to which but, you know, George warhoff has got a challenge this year. He didn't do it last year. He's got to get him to play better. So I'm looking Those forward guys, to watching them during the preseason games. Me too. And, and see if and because to me it's all. I mean, the offensive line so much is about technique. Like if you if you if you have the right technique, you give yourself a chance to be in the right position, and give you a, yourself a much better chance of winning, or at least not. What's Jawan Taylor's technique pro- technical problem, Tony? You always uh, point out Pam Robinson's technical problem, but what's Jawan Taylor's technical he gets, problem? I mean, he, he's a very vertical uh, setter, and if you're not, if you're vertical, meaning going, getting depth, and really, you know, kicking the line, straight back on the line. And if you're going to do that, you better play big, and you better be physical at the point of attack to create the separation. Because, you know, if you don't, that that rusher, you give that rusher a lot of room instead of creating some width with your kick. Now, both are. Viable techniques. I mean, guys do both, but if you're going to be vertical like that, you better be you better be stout because you got to anchor. You got to anchor. You got to anchor. Because they're coming at you. Yeah, and he just. I mean, at times I just don't think he plays as big. He's a powerful man. He's a big man. I personally would try to get. I try to create more width. Um, I'm not his coach, and I'm not saying that that's not a viable technique to teach if that's what Juwan's being taught. But I just think you know, at times he just gets. Push back and gets too soft in the pocket. I don't know. The offensive line mastermind told me that the Jaguars had two really good tackles when he argued with me on Twitter. Who's that? You know, you know that guy that has that offensive line mastermind group out there. They all go. They descend on Texas, and he they have a, a, a school for the offensive linemen. No, I don't he, know who that got, is. Yeah, well, he got on me. He got on me because I ranked certain guys, and when I did my top one hundred. And he said, oh, I didn't know what I was doing. And he, then he came back and tried to say the Jaguars had two good tackles last year. And I went, uh, you might want to clean your eyes out a little bit. Who is this guy? Uh, he's uh, Duke Mannyweather is his name. He used to work for Charles Bentley and kind of spun off and stole his stick. 
and then he's got this whole school down in Texas. Every almost all the offensive linemen in the league go there, Tony. So you're discounting his uh, his credibility, well, is what you're saying? What, I'm not just, but my opinion is no, just because he teaches, he thinks he's a former strength coach. What he's an offensive line guru. First off, end of argument. He said Joe Thomas is better than Tony Baselli. The game is over. <laughs> okay, if you really believe Joe Thomas is better than Tony Baselli, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Let's come back in a moment. <laughs> Plenty more ahead. I, we're off and running in this new season of Monday Jaguars Happy Hour. I love it. Some Each, things never change, JP. No, they do not, and that's a good thing. We like those. If you're looking for the MVP of the truck game, then look no further, th- further than Ford F-150, loaded with impressive capability and designed to dominate work, play, and everything in between. This truck makes tough look easy. No wonder it's the official truck of the NFL and proud partner of your Jacksonville Jaguars. We're back in a moment with Keeping It Real, presented by Woodbridge by Robert Mondavi. It's Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Digital Network. Jaguars Happy Hour is presented in part by TIAA Bank. Created to serve, built to perform. Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. And Baptist Health, changing health care for good. Hi, I'm Tito Beveridge, founder and master distiller at Tito's Handmade Vodka. In 1997, we became the first micro distillery in the state of Texas, and we're still making the same smooth stuff after all these years. We're still cooking in a pot still, working with our dogs by our sides, having fun and tasting batches, and I'm still wearing the same hat even after all these years. Head over to titosvodka.com to learn more about what else we're doing the same. Cheers. 80 proof Tito's Handmade Vodka, distilled and bottled in Austin, Texas. titosvodka.com. Your family isn't like anyone else's. Your home shouldn't be either. At DreamFinders Homes, you can build the home of your dreams in one of their 30-plus communities in Northeast Florida. Choose from luxury single-family homes or maintenance-free townhomes from the 200s. DreamFinders specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. To find out more, call 904-738-0165 or visit DreamFindersHomes.com. Any repeated physical activity puts stress on the body. Checking your phone, getting in the car, sitting at your desk. Checking the phone, getting in your car, sitting at your desk. Checking your phone for the 50th time today. If you do anything with regularity, you should get massaged with regularity. Massage Envy. Keep your body working. Regular body work makes the body work with massage, skin care, and stretch. Come in today for more information or visit MassageEnvy.com for more details. Scrubbing soon to a location near you. You know and love the Scrubble Stars at the Town Center, Fleming Island, and Atlantic Beach. Now get ready for four new locations scrubbing soon this year, featuring Kernan, San Jose, Racetrack Road, and Oakleaf. Give your car the glitz and glam it deserves at the best car wash in town with free car prep, vacuums, window cleaner, and more. You can also catch us at every Jags home game and cool down at the Scrubby's Misting Arch. Drive in to see us now and in the future at our scrubbing soon locations. Scrubbles, trust the bow tie. You'll know quality once you arrive. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we built the SUVs of the future for everyone, like Ford Escape, Edge, or Explorer, all named 2021 IIHS top safety picks with specific headlights. One of the many reasons why Ford has the freshest lineup of SUVs in America, because the SUVs of the future aren't built for a few. They're built for America. Ford SUVs, drive one today. When equipped with available LED headlamps based on auto source incorporated data obtained on 10 at ViStar, we believe in better, especially in helping build a better financial future for our members. So we've reviewed our offerings from the ground up. We've lowered or eliminated over half our fees and enhanced our already competitive rates, saving members more than a million dollars this year, in addition to the millions we save them every year. If you believe that saving money is better, join ViStar. Visit ViStarCU.org. All loans subject to approval, insured by NCUA. The station that the Jaguars listen to, 1010XL. Home of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Welcome back. It's Jaguars Happy Hour on Monday. J.P. Shadrick, Tony Buscelli, Pete Prisco, and time for a new segment we call Keeping It Real, presented by Woodbridge by Robert Mondavi. Open up a winner today. Real Ingredients, award-winning wine by Robert Mondavi. 
Let's, do, we get, do we get any samples? I haven't seen yeah, any where, yet. Where's, where's my box? Yeah, <laughs> box? come on. <laughs> we, where's my case? It's come, week one. Maybe we can work on it. Come on, Mr. Mondavi. Send us. <laughs> Let's start with Jaguars <laughs> passing game coordinator Brian Schottenheimer asked earlier, uh, last week rather, about the progress of quarterback Trevor Lawrence in this offense. He's doing really good. Um, the last day or two, it's been good and there's been bad. Uh, quick with questions. Um, it's weird, you know, he, he's a guy, he's gonna text you at 9.45 at night, 10 o'clock at night with questions. Hey, on, on the script it says this, is that this? Hey, what are you thinking on that? So you know he's working at it all the time. Uh, and he's progressing nicely. You know, that's what you do with a young quarterback. You know, there's gonna be interceptions. He's thrown those, that's gonna happen. Now, if he keeps repeating those mistakes, then that's when you know that he's not listening, he's not making the corrections, but he's not repeating those same mistakes. So uh, that's when you get excited. Brian, Schott Brian Schottenheimer there, the uh, passing game coordinator. Today's Keeping It Real topic, you're an advisor to head coach Urban Meyer, guys. Okay. How long should Trevor Lawrence? How much do we get paid to be the advisor? I don't know, but. Um, well, we're just one of 65 then. Right. You're just another number <laughs> in that side of the hallway. So it's much less than we <laughs> Add you to the list. Uh, how long should Trevor Lawrence play in preseason weeks one, two, and three? Tony, go ahead. I'd play him one quarter in preseason game one, all with the ones. Preseason game two, I'm playing him two quarters plus one series coming out of the half. In preseason game number three, he is sitting on the bench next to me. Pete? Boy, I'll tell you what. Um... Remember, Tony, there's two weeks before the la from the last preseason game until the start of the regular season. It's different this year. And so do you want him not playing at all for three weeks? So I might go a quarter in the first game, quarter and a half in the second game, and maybe one series in the last game just to get his feel for it again. Pete, I get what you're saying, but I don't want to play any of my offensive line in that third preseason game, and I'm not putting them behind backups. Not one series, even. Nope. I mean, you're. I'm not just talking about the. I'm not talking about just him. I'm talking about the team. That means you go three weeks without playing. They went the eight season. months last year without playing <laughs> before the first first game. Huh? They, they practiced went, though. They, yeah, they okay, didn't play you're, games. You're still going to practice. Yeah, I don't know. I might, I might consider playing him one series if he play the starters, but if not, then I wouldn't play him. I'm with Tony. Come, let it come out of the half in the second game and then get him out of there. That's interesting, right? I mean, because – and it's also the first time Urban's had to do this, right? He's got – that's why yeah, he has the NFL staff around yeah. him to help him. Well, I mean, Daryl Bevel's been, been around forever. shoddy has been around forever. That's right. You know, Trent Balk has been a, a GM. It's a different mm – -hmm. it's a different – year though there's it's a new thing there's not four yeah. preseason games cuts are on tuesday um so is you know it's an entirely different thing this year so and, how do you handle it and by the way they're back down to three different cuts this year also they go down to 85 tuesday after the first preseason game and every tuesday after that it's like five the week after but that the last and then, tuesday, but the last tuesday last one's the big one you'd have a week and a half so you could yeah. you're going to cut your roster and you're going to have a week and a half you can get guys in and they could get acclimated quicker yeah, remember and, it used to happen you'd have to get them acclimated right away because you're playing a game the next week and the jaguars pete have the number one waiver claim for the first three weeks of the season so they'll have first option which on is all something these guys they don't want to have ever again with trevor lawrence oh. here either nor will they right so yeah it changes so i don't know so tony does that change your mind at all about the last one no, because I don't want to play my starters. <laughs> one series. What's the What's the benefit of one series? Yeah. It's, like, it's all downside, yeah, you're Pete. You're probably right. Another prep week. You know, you're gonna play. Yeah, yeah you get prep, ready. Guess what? I prep them all week. They go out for uh, pregame warm up. They get their sweat on, and guess what? Get out. I'm playing guys, I want to evaluate and, that are down the line and see what I got. But Tony, what about? Okay, so why play so much in the second game? Then? Because I want my young quarterback to go through, like, the mechanics and the work and everything else. So you're going to play You're going to play the starters? Yeah, I'm playing the forward. starters. I'm playing I, – I'm playing as much as I hate it as a player, I think there's a benefit playing a half, going in at halftime, coming out, and getting a series. I, I, well, I, I don't know. I don't even know. If you're not going to do – I don't know if I would even do that. I'd play him the quarter and get him out of there then. 
I, I just think. Mm. I mean, uh, is that, how hard does it get adjusted to halftime? Well, I'm just saying it's just your body you're used to the mechanics. <laughs> I'll say this: be go what go look at how much. Not last year, the year before, after the Chiefs went to the AFC Championship. I mean, went to the Super Bowl. No, AFC Championship game and lost to the Patriots. Go look how much that following preseason the, you saw they played their starters in preparation for the season. Because well, this is a Super Bowl team that we're talking about from a year ago. Yeah. I mean, two, year, I mean, no, two, two years ago, the one, they, the Super Bowl they I'm won. I'm talking about this team. This is a gr- yeah. bunch of young kids. I know that, but they. I'm saying they put – no, my point is they played a bunch of football. Patrick Mahomes was playing the first preseason game, played the second preseason game. He, this is when they had four preseason games. He even played a little of the third. Like, because so, you so, got to get reps. you got to get okay. practice. So the, okay, if you got to get reps, then why not play a series in the la- in the third preseason game? The if Pat reason, Mahomes – Yes, okay, fair. It's all about reps, Tony. The only, the only reason I'm saying not to, because I know there's no chance they are, so I'm trying to be right. <laughs> what would you, you do as the coach? Yeah, Coach Baselli. I'd you probably do? play him a quarter. I'd go play him a quarter. In the final preseason game, you'd yeah. play him a quarter? Wow. Well, you but just changed your mind then. Wait. No, no <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm giving you. He's giving both sides of the story, <laughs> Pete. He's going to sit him five it. minutes ago. Freddie Freddy Flip Flop. What are you doing? <laughs> what is that? I mean, I could be talked out of the third preseason game. <laughs> you just flip flop. I know. I, I, my point is, I could be talked out of it, Pete. I am he- st- steadfast on a quarter, two quarters, and a series in the third. <laughs> and then I need to evaluate. How about this? I want to evaluate where my team is going to the third preseason. Does it game. matter? I mean, it depends on how they play in the second game. If yes, they don't play well, okay, you need to go out and play again. Yes. If you play great, then you're not playing. Yes, it matters. Okay. Let's well, see how sharp they are. That's well, why you you're just said about re- You said reps. You want reps. You get more reps if you play in the third preseason well, game. Well, if you That's stink, you need more reps, yes. Well, what if you play well? You just said you, you want more re- You want reps, period. That's what you said. Well, Pete, there's a – You there- said as a coach you would play them. <laughs> Pete, there is a fine <laughs> line when there becomes the reps versus the risk have to be weighed. And that's true. I agree. So I probably would play them your first, your first plan – <laughs> Plus my series in the last game, I play yeah. one series in the last game. Urban, just so it's it, not it, three weeks. It depends on what they do in the second preseason game. That determines what I do. Much like Urban this past weekend, determined Sunday after what he saw happen Saturday because he saw the how his team Change, practiced, yeah. how physical they were, yeah. and they were nicked. So he made a informed decision not to put the pads on Sunday. I okay, like if, Urban. If three offensive I went with Urban. Game. I evaluate okay. my team. I'm going to do what's best for my team, Pete. So three offensive linemen are out in the final preseason game. Of course you don't play them. Thank but everybody's you. Healthy, you play, if everybody's healthy, you play them for a No, series. that's not true. If they come out and they're smoking it in the second preseason game and they're tight and we have a good week of practice, I'm saying, boys, hang out on the sideline for this Let me last ask preseason real quick, game. Bubble wrap. One quick question. If this was a normal preseason with like it used to be with four preseason games, how would you play them? I'd go um, one series. I mean, two series, the first preseason game, a quarter and a half, kind of like somewhere a quarter and a little bit, second preseason game, full half, series in the third preseason game, nothing in the fourth preseason game. So so two weeks before the regular season started. Now, I knew this is where this is going. <laughs> you, would play, you would play them more than a half. Now you're two weeks out, and you're only gonna, you're not going to play him. He fell right into that one, Pete. And I he probably really did. And, and really, what I probably do, I might not play him at all in the first preseason game. I saw that one coming a mile and play. a half you away. Have to play. Wait, that game's in Jacksonville. No, I'm talking the old system, the four preseason game. Oh, but this guy, this time you have to play him. Yeah, you got to play yeah. him. Let's come. Back. I would think I'm playing him. Yeah. Let's see if we can go to break, JP, and Tony will change his mind four more times. Hey, Urban, if you're listening, (laughs) if you need any help, we can get it done on this (laughs) show on Monday. Tony Tony can't give it to you. Yeah, I'm like Urban. Listen, I got to evaluate my team as we go, Pete. Oh, my God. (laughs) That was Keeping It Real, presented by Woodbridge by Robert Mondavi. Open up a winner today. Real Ingredients, award-winning wine by Robert Mondavi. And you can secure what? Don't be afraid to share a little Mondavi Woodbridge with us. If I get some samples, if we get some samples in here, you may or may not get some, Tony. Are you Now that they're a sponsor, are we allowed to t- taste the product on the air, Joe? No? 
Not Probably right. no. Uh, secure the, the best rules. seats at the best price and become a Jaguars season ticket member today. Visit jaguars.com slash tickets or call 904-633-2000. We're back in a moment with social media questions. Oh, here we go. It's Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Digital Network. Jaguars Happy Hour is presented in part by DreamFinders Homes. Homes that fit your lifestyle. Next Grill, everyone's invited. And Adeco. Visit adecousa.com. Hi, I'm Tito Beveridge, founder and master distiller at Tito's Handmade Vodka. In 1997, we became the first micro distillery in the state of Texas, and we're still making the same smooth stuff after all these years. We're still cooking in a pot still, working with our dogs by our sides, having fun and tasting batches, and I'm still wearing the same hat even after all these years. Head over to titosvodka.com to learn more about what else we're doing the same. Cheers. 80 proof Tito's Handmade Vodka, distilled and bottled in Austin, Texas. titosvodka.com Healthcare coverage for less? Yes. Now, because of the new healthcare stimulus, you can get better benefits, more coverage, and pay less with a Florida Blue plan. Claim your savings today. Visit floridablue.com slash get covered now. Policies have limitations and exclusions. If you already had health insurance in 2021, speak with an agent to find out how changing plans could impact your deductibles and out-of-pocket maximums. Florida Blue and Health Options Incorporated, DBA Florida Blue, HMO, are independent licensees of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association. At most sandwich places, asking for more of something is just part of the drill. But what if you never had to ask for more? What if more was just a given? At Daly's, more is what our sandwiches are built on. More meat, more cheese, more veggies, more quality, more taste. All for a price that's anything but more. Sandwiches from Dash, made fresh, Daly's. Summer is the perfect time to update your home. It's the best savings of the year going on right now at Renewal by Anderson of Florida. Get 25% off replacement windows and patio doors, plus no money down, no payments, and no interest for 12 months. Find out more at rbafla.com. Renewal by Anderson, the official replacement window and door partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Offer expires August 31st. Restrictions apply. Minimum purchase of three windows or patio doors required. License number CGC1527613. At ViStar, we believe in better. And what's better than saving up to $5,000 in closing costs when you buy or refinance a home? With a ViStar No Closing Costs Mortgage, you'll get a great rate, no hidden fees, and like the name says, no closing costs up to $5,000. If you believe saving money is better, join ViStar. Equal housing opportunity insured by NCUA. All loans subject to credit approval. Offer not available on VA and FHA mortgages. For more information, visit ViStarCU.org. Jaguars fans are gearing up and saving big at Fanatics.com, the world's largest collection of officially licensed fan gear from all the leagues, teams, and Jaguars players you love. Shop the most trusted brands, exclusive designs by Fanatics, and autograph collectibles from today's biggest stars. Join Fanatics Rewards today and earn fan cash on every purchase. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. Mike Dempsey and Fat Tony. Jaguars today. All Jaguars, all NFL, all the time. 10 to noon weekdays on 1010XL. Welcome back. It's Jaguars Happy Hour on a Monday. Glad you're along with us. The first Monday show of the 2021 campaign. J.P. Shadrick, Tony Vaselli, Pete Prisco. Your social questions coming up in moments. Tony Vaselli, you have a comment. Yeah, to be clear, there was no flip-flopping, Pete. There was I, a I, lot of flip-flopping. No, there was not. Like I a said, fish on the no, deck. I said from the beginning, two series or a quarter in the first preseason game, a half in one series in the second preseason game, Nothing in the third preseason game. I then did make an amendment of a possibility if the team did not play well and I needed more reps that I'd be open to some time in the third preseason game. But you always have to weigh reps versus risk. And if you have a good good first preseason game, good second preseason game, have a good week of practice, you do not need that third preseason game. I'm standing by weeks. that. That's so my position, and that's so what I said. Off. It got muddled up because Pete 
likes to twist words and no, take things out of context. He's a typical <laughs> reporter that misquotes you and then prints it in the paper and says, no. this is the story. Typical hey, reporter. JP. Tony allowed two wanna, sacks today, but yeah, go ahead. You want to, you want to, Take a side on that. Hey, can you right fix there? your cool. earbuds so they don't look like you're like, you don't look like you're an alien <laughs> like with a point straight out? Hey, hey, you, JP, you want to take yes. it, take a pick a side? Who who is uh, right? So we're keeping score on keeping it real. I think starting now. So I think Pete won. No, he did not. He yeah. copied me. He said I do what Tony so, did. No, you. Then when I came back and I asked you, no. how would you handle no. it if it was a regular preseason Wrong. game? I you heard said it. You I, got, I'm, I heard it both ways. I'm getting Pete. all kinds of tweets and saying Tony was clearly. Um, clearer and concise and wins no, the segment. No, he wasn't. It wasn't. You weren't yeah, even well, close to being concise. Well, they're not tell judging you, Tell it. your family to quit making you look good. You didn't Con- make me, come on. Concise is, quit texting you. concise is not in Tony's dictionary. That doesn't work. No, uh, that's no. not how it works he, for Tony. Look, it, when I, I won the argument in large part because when I came back and asked him how he would play it, if it was a four-week preseason like the old yeah. days, he said he would have played him. Uh, and, into the third, in the third week, and that so. was it. the The case was closed oh, there. Uh, Done. Bang the gavel. It's over. Case dismissed. Over. Done. Pete, Pete Done wins. With it. That's it. Send Let's me get the to... case of Robert Mondavi and uh, Tony gets nothing. <laughs> That's You're the I used to ask for a bottle. You're asking for a case. <laughs> well, I'm the winner. Losers get a bottle. Winners get a case. <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's, it pays to win, man. I mean, that's what we want. Winners. So all year you'll get a you get a bottle. By the end of the year, you'll have a case. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to social media questions. We put out the bat signal earlier today, and here's the best we've come up with today at Stu Winners. Guys, we're happy you're back. I'm interested in how much of a difference the sports performance model Meyer has brought into the team has made. As I would have thought by now, most, if not all, clubs would be doing similar things in this area. Pete, they've added so many facilities here in the offseason. Cryo, tank, hot, cold tubs, all these things that uh, they didn't have before. And uh, Urban's made an, an emphasis. It's not the only place in the league that does this, though, is it? No, I was at Miami's practice facility the other day. You should see the thing. It's incredible. They just built it. It's right outside the stadium. It's phenomenal. And that and that's the next step for Jacksonville. Hey, kudos to Urban for bringing all that stuff in there. You have to have it. They just don't have the room for it. They need a facility. And I, and I think it's going to get done. It needs to get done. Uh, I will be real melancholy when they do build the practice facility in large part because that means the days of the reporters sitting on the bench outside Waiting for guys to come out to get the real story will be over. So, remember, um, Tony? The interesting thing about the comment about the sports performance, I agree with Pete. I love it. As a player, do everything you can. I mean, as it's, I mean, for the players, as a staff, do everything you can to make sure they're ready to perform at the highest level. Yeah, and it gives them more value for themselves yeah, as well. I and think it's great. Urban's, I love it. Yeah. I would love, in, I mean, paying the close enough attention. It'd be interesting to do at the end of this camp. Does And it's such a sample size. You probably have to do it over years by having these extra facilities and these extra treatments and, you know, cryo and massage and hot, cold, warm, yep. whatever yep. tubs. I yep. mean, all the different stuff, which again, all four, I love it as a player. I would have been all about it is I wonder what the difference is. Is there a direct correlation to less injuries? Especially soft tissue injuries. Mm-hmm. I think that I mean you can't a guy blowing his knee out getting rolled up in a pile. I mean that right. has to do with that anything. Has no right. bearing. I mean there's no bearing. But soft tissue injuries. I wonder if there's a direct correlation that you can measure. It'd be interesting. I like that's the idea yeah. behind it. It'd be to interesting to measure that yeah. over a long period of time. Yeah. I mean one year you're not going to do it, but like over a five year period, did you lessen the number of soft tissue injuries? Injuries yet? You've come, a lo- you've come a long way from sprinkling creatine on the French fries in the cafeteria, <laughs> like like coffee. <laughs> It's amazing, though, how few uh, people miss stuff back then, Pete, only because everyone was afraid to death to go to the training room. <laughs> you you remember? To stay out of there. But do you remember? You remember we used to be in Osho used to joke that the creatine fry. <laughs> remember? Yeah. Because he sprinkled stuff off. It was everywhere. But you know, I mean, it, it, it just it's a different mentality. I mean, it's incredible. The facilities nowadays, and, which and is this awesome. one's going and to as get a player, built. I would have loved it. Yeah, because you don't have to pay for it anymore on your you own. Know what Brian, you know what Brian Flores told me the other day? He goes, it keeps the guys around longer. Yeah, that's it the bring, idea. It here. builds camaraderie. You don't, you don't get out of there quickly in the off season, even because there's so much right there. If you got all that stuff right there, you don't need to go get a massage somewhere else. You don't need to go get cryotherapy somewhere else. 
The food is good. I mean, it just it just makes sense for teams to do that. I love it. And yeah. I, I'm just jealous it wasn't around when I was a player. <laughs> Let's move along to our next question from at J Hopkins BGS. Has Cam Robinson or Walker Little reached out to Tony? Um, one that's a private conversation. I like to. Okay. No, you sound like a player now. No, <laughs> I have had um, conversations with Cam over the years, and I uh, traded text messages with Walker after he got drafted, and I'll leave it at that. Okay. And and we're not ready to call anybody Baby Vaselli yet. Just like over the years, every guy that's ever been called that, is, <laughs> it's almost like a curse. Baby Vaselli, curse, curse. Well, I'll say the I, same thing, and I know, Pete, you never, you always like say, oh, stop. Number one, don't care. It, it's not like let, let them be their own players. Like walk, like Cam Robinson, let him go be the left tackle, and I hope, I hope he exceeds what I did, and I hope he's a better player than I was because that means it's good for our franchise. And if it's not Cam Robinson, I hope it's Walker Little. And I hope Juwan Taylor playing right tackles better than I was and better than Leon Searcy was. I mean, that's what you want for the franchise. I mean, any yeah, ex-player. Uh, I'd, be, I'd, I'd be leaning to no on all those, by the way. No, but Pete, you know what I mean. As an ex-player, if, I you, know. love, if you love the franchise, it's not like about like, oh, you don't want anyone. like No, yes, I want them to be better. I want them great Mike careers. Pierce, I want Mike them to make Pierce. a ton of money, and I want us to win a Super Bowl. Wait, wait. Mike Pearson was baby Baselli, never worked out. <laughs> Luke Joko, baby Baselli, never worked out. Don't maybe they stop calling him that. Yeah, I would. I never liked the I like I never liked the moniker anyways. Yeah, that and what they've had four or five padded practices in camp already. That's oh, it. it's so early. They haven't played a preseason game yet. Uh, Logs and I were talking about that, Pete. Like the total <laughs> amount of padded practices they'll have <laughs> in quote unquote camp, we would have had in the first week of camp. Think about that. It's it's incredible. I, I was telling one of the bar, I was telling Shaq Barrett he was all sweaty after practice, and I go, <laughs> he goes, it's hot out here, and I go, you have no idea, dude. Ray Perkins used to have three practices a day, three. No, padded. Three days. I mean, I, I, we never had three days. I just remember we'd have two practices and the walkthrough, and the two practices were in the heat of the day. And they were both padded, and you're going full speed and just beating the hell out of you. Now, and by the way, this isn't the old guy said, oh, we were tougher. You should have been. No. Like, I, my no. idea is, like, I like what they do now. Like, it would have been better. Tony, you guys would go 2-1, then 2 again, right? It was never 2-2-2. Two, two, and two. No, it was. So the first year, it was 2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2. Two, 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 two. That's right. And you the second year, it was 2-2-2-2-2-2-2. Two, 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 two. The third year, when we thought we got the break, it was 2-1-2-1. <laughs> Two one, <laughs> right. That's right. Stevens point. It was two 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 for sure. And I, I think thought like, the second year he, he evolved a little bit. Well, maybe the second year was two two one two two one. Yeah, and then it went yeah. two one two one. But, but they were they were all in pads. Or everything was in pads. You know what's gone? What the middle drill is gone. Nine on seven. That and where they pound it really hard. They did like that the, the other days. day. Here. Oh, they do nine. They still did do nine and seven. Yeah, yeah. first yeah. day in pads. Um, a lot of teams. Or how about like when you used to start practice with goal line? Remember that? No, goal line yeah. was always. They always had like after week one or something. Goal line was live. It was a live drill, and that's even up to last last year. The last couple of years, it's been, you always have to is do anybody, that live. Is anybody tackling? No, they don't tackle there, right? No, no. I, I no. Uh, thud. Some places do though. Yeah, not many, though. Yeah. Let's uh, get a couple more questions in, yeah. and let's go to question number four, Brent. And at Duval Knoll, if we keep six wide receivers, who do we keep? Seems like it would be difficult to cut Treadwell at this point. Well, let's do a quick mat, uh, count, and I got the list right here. Oh, so, good for you. Um, let's go. We got, well, you know, LaVista Chenault on the team. That's one. Marvin Jones on the team. Two. TJ Chark on the team. Yes, even though he had surgery Great. on his finger, but yes. Oh, he ready, did? Yeah. Ready week one. Yeah, but, Is that, yeah, but that Urban Meyer said one. that. Then okay. Three. Um, then you start getting Door set. Mm, I already haven't done much, right? Colin Johnson. Colin Johnson, I'd say, is on the team. It's four. four. I, I, I think I think Jalen Camp is on the team because he's a big physical guy who can play special teams, I think. That's five. Well, that's why he's got to play special teams. Uh, Agnew on the team. He's a kick returner. That's Special six. teams. Doesn't that's, really count as a receiver, though. That's six. You need one more receiver. Treadwell. Seven. So who, you, six so who are you cutting? Who am I cutting? 
There's yeah. like 25 receivers yeah, right I mean, now. Yeah, but which, which guy of any note is being caught? Philip Dorsett. Philip Dorsett and Tavon Austin. Yeah, they're both first-round picks. Yeah, but they're older. A while and, ago. Yeah. Uh, and maybe – now, here's the thing. If you keep Treadwell and you keep uh, Camp uh, Jalen Camp, do you get rid of Colin Johnson because he doesn't run and Urban Meyer likes they speed? They want a track team. And those other guys are big and fast. Colin Johnson's just big and not a speed uh, speed guy. There are six receivers probably on somebody else's roster right now. That could be another thing. Yeah, first uh, waiver claim, all that. Well, JP had him trading for Michael Thomas. So. <laughs> <laughs> Which Pete immediately shut down yeah. saying, bad idea. Well, seen... First off, you, you do like speed. He doesn't run. No, he does right. not. Big, big guy. Uh, let's get our final question in. At Dan8381, who got in better shape during the break, Prisco or Baselli? My money's on Baselli because I'm terrible. Yeah, I'm not much wow. better. I, I would That's a- the first time I've ever heard. I would, I, I would actually, like, I would actually concede. argue it's a tie for last. Yeah. <laughs> it's I mean, not. I'm, hey, Pete, I'm not in a good position because it's it's fat ball season and I'm already fat. Yeah, but you know what though? I, I had a lazy summer and I worked out and stuff, but I ate bad. I, you know, but I'm trying to be better leading into the season. Give me a month. I got a colonoscopy coming up at the end of the month, so that'll flush uh, out Too much information. TMI, TMI. <laughs> Do not need to hear about your um, medical issues or procedures. So that'll, that'll, that'll flush out a few of the five extra pounds underneath. <laughs> That's great, Pete. This is a family show. Yeah, great. <laughs> Let's come back on that note. note. (laughs) Uh, Thanks for the questions, everyone. We'll get to them again next week. Uh, Let's come back. We'll go around the NFL and wrap it up in our first Monday happy hour of the season. Yes, what a show it's been. It's Jaguars happy hour on the Jaguars digital network. Hi, I'm Tito Beveridge, founder and master distiller at Tito's Handmade Vodka. In 1997, we became the first micro distillery in the state of Texas, and we're still making the same smooth stuff after all these years. We're still cooking in a pot still, working with our dogs by our sides, having fun and tasting batches, and I'm still wearing the same hat even after all these years. Head over to titosvodka.com to learn more about what else we're doing the same. Cheers. 80 proof Tito's Handmade Vodka, distilled and bottled in Austin, Texas. titosvodka.com. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we built the SUVs of the future for everyone, like Ford Escape, Edge, or Explorer, all named 2021 IIHS top safety picks with specific headlights. One of the many reasons why Ford has the freshest lineup of SUVs in America, because the SUVs of the future aren't built for a few. They're built for America. Ford SUVs, drive one today. When equipped with available LED headlamps based on auto source incorporated data obtained on 10 It may be football season, but pests are in full force here in Jacksonville. That's why you need Kingfish Pest Control's $99 knockdown treatment. Kingfish Pest Control will safely eliminate spiders, ants, roaches, and more for just $99, backed by their 100% customer satisfaction guarantee. Kingfish Pest Control is family-owned with thousands of A-plus customer reviews. They're hands down the best pest control company in Metro Jacksonville and a proud partner of your Jacksonville Jaguars. Let the pros tackle the pest in your home. Go to kingfishpest.com. That's kingfishpest.com. Fans like you have been told that going all out is going too far. But fans like you know better. You're the kind of fan who loves the team as much as your pet. Who paints yourself for game day and dyes your pets for it a match. You are a rare breed. You are a pet fanatic. Equal parts pet obsessed and diehard sports fan. At Pet Paradise, they're crazy about pets too. The official pet care provider of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Pet Paradise. It's a new day in pet care. When it comes to water, choose our team, the winning team. Choose CGC Water Treatment. CGC Water Treatment works, and it works for DG, too. Former Jags QB, David Garrard. If you're not filtering your water, you are the filter. Don't be the filter. Discover the kinetical difference. Call CGC Water Treatment at 844-CGC-JAGS or visit CGCwater.com. CGC Water Treatment are proud partners of the Jacksonville Jaguars and your local independent Kinetico dealers. 
Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go. Exclusively from TIAA Bank, the Jacksonville Jaguars Visa Debit Card comes with a fierce look and fantastic features, along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide. And it's yours, free, when you open a Yield Pledge checking account. Order yours today. Visit TIAABank.com slash JagsCard. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. When Jaguars news breaks, you'll hear about it first on 1010XL, home of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Welcome back. Jaguars happy hour on a Monday, the first Monday program of the 2021 season. J.P. Shadrick, Tony Vaselli. Pete Prisco, Joe Fortunato on the audio, Brent Reber on the video side, Trent Padilla. You know one thing I hate? A lot of work. Yes. What, what, of one, of many things you hate, what is one? Well, this time of year, because Pete loves doing it. He loves cutting down the roster. He loves cutting people. We've got about eight minutes if you want to do it now. No, I hate it. Like, even going through the wide receivers, because, like, like, Philip Dorsett might be the guy that may, I mean, we're sitting here, like, making guesses. It's not like we're watching enough tape to really determine who's having the better camp, whether it's Philip Dorsett or, you know, Colin Johnson. Right. Or what they're looking for, because a lot of times. Again, I think they're, I think they're, they're six receivers not on the roster. You know, but, but you don't know. And, and, I mean, I throw out Jalen Camp out there. I'm just assuming that they, you know, he's a good special teams player. He, I haven't he, watched looks, one. he looks the part. He looks it, but I haven't watched yeah. one special team. Period. It also yeah. shows there's a significant drop from three down. Well, I think I, I think the message to the fans is, and this is you know because you know who knows maybe uh, Josh Hammond who had a bunch of catches, maybe he you know yeah shows up and does something. Yeah. I mean who knows? I think the message more than anything, the three guys that we know, I would I say I don't know, I would be really confident are on the roster are DJ Chark. Marvin Jones and LaVisca Chanel. Like those two. And that's, that's it. For, there's a drop down after that. And then I think after that, it's wide open. Yeah. Oh, that's why is it. Travis, Travis Etienne plays wide receiver, too. He lines up out there some. He's still a running back. Yeah. Pete. I know, but he plays out and, there. But so. it's like I mean, running back. And he's been making some catches the last couple of days, by the way. Running it's like, back. Who's it's like running back. back. It's easy. The top three, I can tell you, I mean, unless something drastic happens or someone gets hurt, it's. Travis Etienne, it's Carlos Hyde, it's James Robinson. Pretty easy. Tight end, pretty easy. I don't know if tight ends is easy. How, number one, how many you're keeping four because one of them will be the fullback. So right. if you're so keeping, you're keeping four, you're keeping Manhurt and O'Shaughnessy. O'Shaughnessy, and then who else? Two. You keep the rookie, Luke Farrell. Yes, and, and then him. you probably keep El Elson. And then you you get then it becomes Tyler Davis or Tebow in the practice squad, which I think it'll be Tyler Davis. I think Tebow's the sixth tight end on the out of six. Yeah, you disagree? I mean, I um, do I disagree? From what I've seen, no. Okay, so so then those it, are your those. So you but no, but I mean, ends. but it's still early. I mean, yeah. there's so much stuff that can happen between now. Especially well, we're talking I, you, about right now. Tony. No, but Pete, I, my point is, I think the Jaguars the tight end. The, some of the other ones, you know, it's like obvious. The Jaguars tight end situation, outside of O'Shaughnessy and uh, Mannert, yeah. is wide open. It will be decided during the preseason. They all kind of seem like the same kind of guy to me. Well, like outside well, Farrell, of Mannert, Farrell's, and... Farrell's going to be on the team. Right, he's a draft pick. He's going to be like on you. Team. Like you talk about Tebow, his being the sixth guy. Okay, maybe now. What if what, he goes out in games and just like dominates? Well, games the one thing that you know. He flashes at times, good stuff. Then there's other things, like you watch his blocking ability. He needs to work on his physicality, especially if he's going to be that fullback. Hasn't been great in yeah. what I've seen. Haven't seen it all, so maybe he's flashed at other times. Well, uh, I being really day, physical. He's not a very physical player at the point of attack. No. The day I saw him, he, they pulled him on a play, and he, he ducked his head, and the defensive end went right around him. And so if you want to be that – Move tight end, fullback, lead up on there, and mm-hmm. linebackers. You got to be a physical dude. And Jeff Logman said it best: being physical and tough as a quarterback is different than being physical and tough as a position player like a tight end or fullback. Okay, so what what number is he at the tight end position right now? In your mind, haven't we just gone through this? 
Well, he, he I want to hear I thought Tony we just said this. He keeps... I mean, can, can you really distinguish between Tebow, uh, Elfson, and Davis? Is it that is that big a deal? Yeah, I mean, is that, is well, that, Davis. Is, it's I think it's between Davis and Tebow in the practice squad. That's okay, the way well, I see it. I mean, it. it's right now, and then they got three weeks to go. So. I just think it's early. Like that's yeah. so close, Pete. Is my point is number one. You know, I hate this more than anything. <laughs> that's why we do it. Maybe number next two, week we'll do the whole it, team. It is early, and like those are really competitive positions. Let's uh, touch on some notes from around the National Football League. Pete, your guy in Buffalo got paid. Quarterback Josh Allen's bringing on the bacon. Hey, look, they finally have their quarterback that they've been looking for from Jim Kelly since Jim Kelly. They Dude, tried did, all kinds of guys. Hey, did, pa- did, pa- did Patrick Mahomes sign one year too early? <laughs> no. I mean, they'll re- tear that up again now. Bird in the God, hand is worth two in well, the bush, Well, I guess here's my point. Did Patrick Mahomes sign too long of a deal? Probably, yes. Like, why wouldn't he that, just settle and say, I'll sign a four-year deal? Right. He did sign too long a deal. I don't think there's any doubt about that. But how do you turn that money down when they put it in front of you? Yeah, because, well, I'm it, depends, sign right it, away. De- it depends how much of that back end guaranteed, though. Yeah. I mean, he got a lot of guaranteed money. Allen got more. You know who also got a lot of money it was Deshaun Watson. And John McClain of the Houston Chronicle today said, uh, quote on Twitter, Watson will never play another down for the Texans, end quote. So where's he playing? Uh, who's going to trade for him right now? Nobody. It's too, it's too big a risk. I mean. You can't. I mean, there's crimi- there's there's a criminal investigation, if I'm understanding the la- latest Correct. reports going on. There's Correct. 22 women who have civil charges against them. I'm not saying he's guilty. I'm just saying that's no. a lot of drama going on. And if I'm a GM, I'm not trading first round draft picks plus eating up his salary for a guy that might not play for a while. And it's hard to, it's hard in this climate and everything. It's how do you sell that to your fan base? You can't. No way. Giants running back Saquon Barkley will return from the pup list today. That was the plan. They certainly missed him a year ago. How much better? How much better are they going to play? And how much better does, does he make them, Pete? Well, he makes them better, but he's a running back. You know how I feel about that. Um, <laughs> uh, again, though, he might not play week one, just an FYI. Because this, of the this, knee? Yes, not all the way back. And some of the talk, well, what, Pete, but what, didn't one. he get the hurt early in the season? Yeah. That's, like, that's the opposite of Adrian Peterson. <laughs> Correct. Uh, and our final thought, Hall of Fame induction speeches in the enshrinement ceremony the last couple days, Peyton Manning's was challenging everyone to make the game better. Uh, Tony, at what point in your speech will you include Pete Prisco? First of all, I have not been elected to the Hall of Fame. I don't know if there's the, like, some, Next year. some breaking news, so I'm not going to talk about that. Thank you, JP. Next year. Next year. I will tell you this, though, JP. Over the course of the last decade, maybe not a decade, but eight, nine years, seven, eight, nine years, I've pestered a lot of writers. And they run from me now because they know I'm going to talk about Tony. <laughs> and they literally, I see him. They're going, oh, here he comes. And so this year, for the first time ever, guys have been coming up to me, bringing it up and saying, your guy's getting in this year. We'll see. I like it. We'll I see. like it. Uh, it's a good first show, guys. Pete, we'll talk to you next week. Pete. You will. I'll be catch up later. Next Monday. So You're here? But I, no, I'm in Minnesota. Oh. That's a little different from here. That's Pete Prisco, CBS Sports Senior Writer. That's Tony Baselli, Pride of the Jaguars Left Tackle. I'm J.P. Shadrick. We'll catch you next time. Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Digital Network.